welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing our stamp set Snowball Fight and its coordinating dies. We're also going to be introducing the Snow Flurries background stencil. So let's go ahead and check these out. First up, we're going to check out Snowball Fight, and this stamp set is so cute, and it's one of my favorites ever. It's so adorable because our little mice are having a snowball fight. So we have all of these adorable little mice doing different things, like throwing the snowball, crouching away from the snowball, making the snowballs. It's so super cute. We have two snowballs that are kind of flying through the air in both directions to help you set the scene. We have a really cute snow mouse and a fun little snow fort there, and a little flag that you can add to the top of the fort or even that little snow mouse can hold the flag. We have a pile of snowballs and then some snowballs that are in the process of being formed or kind of melting a little bit. And then we have some little individual snowflakes that are great for setting the scene. There's a tiny heart and a tiny star, and those are perfect for putting in that little flag or even just decorating the background of your card. And then we have these great small sentiments. We have snowball fight, zing, gotcha, eep, and splat. And I love stamping these around the mice to kind of fill in the scene. They look so cute. We also have some fun larger sentiments. So here we have happy winter and I love coloring in those letters in kind of an ombre style. They look so pretty. We have, we have snow much fun together. Hope your day is a hit and also a happy winter in a smaller font, depending on what you need for your card. Next, we're gonna start coloring in these cute little mice. And I really love using warm grays for these mice in wintertime. I feel like it really goes along with the blues that I really like to use in these cute little snowball fight scenes. So that's how I'm gonna color in a lot of these mice, but one of them will do a little bit different. Now, I was inspired by Tammy from our design team to color in these mice. And what's really cool about her coloring is she always has kind of a darker line around the outside, and then she goes really, really light from there. And there's something about that that makes the mice almost look like they're glowing. It's so cool, and I love doing that. I love getting inspired by my crafty friends, seeing what they're creating, what they're doing, and then trying to do something similar to them. And so this was really fun in a little bit of a different way than I normally color, because I have a tendency to not go as light, but oh my gosh, I love how it turned out. Now for this other little mice here, I am using some browns. So you can see that browns look really cute on these mice just as much as the grays. So just kind of depends on the look and scene that you're going for in your card. I'm going to add some rosy color to both their cheeks and their ears. And there's something about those little rosy cheeks that just make them so cute. And then I'm going to color in all of their little cute beanies. And this is such a fun way to add color into your cards. You can use it to match the pattern paper you're using or whatever color scheme you're going for uh, because I'm kind of in holiday mode here I'm using some nice beautiful reds and then here you can see that since I had my red markers out, I went ahead and colored in everything that I wanted to be red. Now I'm bringing in some greens to go with that traditional red and green color scape. And you can see how cute this is to mix and match the two different greens and reds on the different mice. I'm also going to mix and match red and green on one of the mice, which is really cute too. You can also go for some non-traditional holiday color palettes as well. You could do pinks and purples. Here I'm gonna take out a nice bright blue so you can really play around with these and it's just so much fun to color in their little accessories. Now for the white parts of the hats, I just added a little bit of warm gray on the sides just to add a little bit of detail and I feel like it kind of makes the white of the little pom-pom on the top pop. I'm going to use some really light blues here to add some color to our different snow items. So I'm just going to go around the inside edge of my snow mouse there and the snow fort and you'll see as we do that the white just pops on there and it gives it this cool frosty look. So I really love using this. You could use light blue markers or light blue green markers and they look really really great too. These are the coordinating dies for the stamp set, which you can bend apart at the tabs or use your wire snips to separate. We're gonna take these and line them up with our stamped images, hold them in place with some low tack tape, run it through the die cut machine, and we'll have beautifully cut out images. And then here you can see all of the adorable images in the set, and they are so cute and so much fun to mix and match. I love the little mites that are crouching down building the snowballs. So what I like to do is put those kind of little half form melted snowballs next to those characters. You can of course have the one guy throwing the snowball, the one that's crouching, and you can have the other guy hiding behind the snow fort, which is so cute. I love that little snow mouse too. You can also have the characters building the snow mouse as if they're building their own snowman, right? And the little one that's meant to be crouching down, you can turn him on his side and it looks like he's patting that snow mouse, making the perfect snowman. You can also add 
add the little flag to the top of the fort, or you can have the snow mouse hold it, which is super cute. You could also have the other character hide behind the snow fort. So there are so many fun ways to mix and match this set. Now this is the Snow Flurry's background stencil, and oh my goodness, I love this stencil so much. It just makes the perfect snowy background, and I really, really love using it with paste. I love using it with the white paste or the fairy dust paste, so that's what we're going to do next. So we're gonna start off by die cutting some textured cardstock here in this beautiful light blue color with a stitched rectangle die. And then we're gonna be creating our beautiful snowy scene on this. So here I have my little make art station. This is a nice thing for using for stenciling. I added a little tape runner to the back of my piece and I'm gonna attach that down onto the station. And then it's got these great magnets so that's gonna hold the stencil in place so that I'm easily able to use my stencil paste. Then for this card, I'm going to use some of the white stencil paste. I thought the bright white would look really, really pretty on the soft blue cardstock. So I'm going to take some of this paste with a spatula and then just spread it across the stencil. And as I spread it, you'll see I'm kind of smearing it over. And as soon as I kind of run out, then I grab a little bit more and smear the little pile again over all of those tiny little snow flurries and stars that are in the background. So I'm just going to smear that all over. I'm not too worried about the bottom because I'm going to be covering the bottom part up. And then here is my favorite. We're going to lift up the stencil and now we have these beautiful three-dimensional snow flurries in the background. Now I'm going to set that aside to dry and as we do that we're going to do some heat embossing. So I prepped my black cardstock with a anti-static powder tool and then we're going to stamp in some clear embossing ink and then sprinkle on some white heat embossing powder and then heat it up with the heat tool. And you'll see that I did two of them. I always do two just in case I made a mistake on one of them. I always do two of them just in case and actually this time they both turn out perfect so I'm going to save the other one for another card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim down this piece and we're going to do something kind of fun with this sentiment. We are going to trim out the word snow because we're going to use some die cut letters for the word snow. And I love doing this on cards, taking a sentiment and picking one word and using die cut letters for those. And right now we are recreating a gorgeous card by Tammy. So thank you so much, Tammy, for this beautiful card design. So here we have our Henry's ABC's die cut letter and we die cut the letters S, N, and W. But for the O, we're going to use a snowflake. And this snowflake is from the Snow Flurry's backdrop die. So for the letters, we die cut them out of white and then a shade of blue cardstock that's a little bit darker than our blue background. And that's what I love about those textured canvas cardstock packs is they have all these great shades. So we just went up a shade to die cut the shadow. And then we're gonna layer the white letters over, shifting them over to the right just a little bit to give them this great little pop. And then here you can see how that snowflake is gonna become the O and the word snow. And I thought this was just such a cute idea and so much fun. Next, I took a stitched rectangle die that's the same size as the one we used for our background, and we die cut some white cardstock out of that. And then here is a stitched hill side border die, and we're gonna die cut that piece there. And that's gonna give us a snowy hill that's gonna have the same exact stitching so that everything's gonna match and coordinate really nicely. I'm gonna add some tape runner on the back of that and then layer that into the scene. And I just think it looks so pretty with the white snowy hill and those beautiful white stencil paste little stars and snow flurries. Next up, we're gonna start setting up the sentiment. So we're gonna start with the we have, and then we're gonna start working on the snow part. I'm kind of starting from the top and building on down to make sure everything is lined up really nicely. So we'll have the we have, and then we're gonna replace the word snow that we cut out. We're replacing that with our beautiful die cut letters. Now for the snowflake, I'm just holding it in place there to see where the W should go, which I like it right there. And then we're gonna add the rest of the sentiment and we'll add the snowflake last, because the snowflake it's going to overlap just a little bit. So we're going to add the much fun together and then now we can add the snowflake down and you'll see how the snowflake is going to overlap the sentiment there and the other letters and I think that looks really cute and it kind of helps integrate the snowflake as the O in the word snow. Next, we're gonna take the images that we stamped, colored, and die cut earlier, and we're gonna start forming our scene. And that's what's so much fun about this stamp set is creating these little scenes and telling a little story as to what's going on. So we're gonna have our snow mouse there, our snowman in the front, and I've got that popped up with some foam squares. And then I have the guy in the background, I have him with tape runners, so he really feels like he's in the background throwing a snowball. Then here we have our cute little mouse forming snowballs here at the bottom, and so we're gonna layer some of those snowballs that are being formed 
formed around the snow mouse. And then we're going to take another mouse who is throwing a snowball right back. We're going to add him with some tape runners once again. So they're in the background and then we kind of have this snow mouse and fort in the foreground. We're going to take this cute little crouching guy and he's going to hide behind that snow fort. He's kind of hiding from this really fun snowball fight that's going on. And then we're going to add these cute little snowballs. I love that they have them in both directions so that it's really easy to kind of form these cute little scenes. And then here's another snowball that's flying that the other one is kind of crouching from. Now this cute scene is just looking awesome. So the next thing we need is a card base. So this is a five and a half by four and a quarter standard card base. We're gonna add some tape runner onto that and then we can layer our whole scene with the beautiful stencil background and the cute little mice having a snowball fight right on top. Then the last little finishing touch is to add a little gem into the middle of the snowflake. So this is one of these little silver sparkle crystals. They're fun in shakers, but they're also really fun to add onto cards. And so we're just gonna use some liquid glue from the glue tube and put it right in the center of the snowflake. And how cute and fun is this? I love the dimension from the paste with the stencil. It looks so gorgeous in the background. And then those little mice having a snowball fight is just the cutest thing ever. Oh, so sweet. So now we're gonna make another card with Snowball Fight that's inspired by a card by Megan that was just stunning. And we're gonna be using the Let It Shine Starry Skies paper that is my new favorite paper ever. And so we're gonna be taking out the largest stitched rectangle die and we're gonna be die cutting some of this beautiful navy starry paper. And we have this in both six by six and 12 by 12, but I really loved the smaller pattern of the six by six, so we're going to use that. So I've taken out two pieces and we're gonna die cut one of them with the the largest stitch rectangle and then we're going to die cut the other one with a three and a half inch circle die. And then we're going to be doing a really fun technique with Distress Oxide ink. So I loved this navy but I also wanted part of this to be a little bit lighter because that circle is going to become part of a snow globe and I wanted the center of it to kind of be almost glowing and so I thought oh well Distress Oxide inks are really really cool because they kind of sit on top of the paper so what would it look like if I took a lighter color ink and put it on top of this beautiful foiled paper so that's what we did with Salvage Patina ink over top the navy star paper and you can see how that ink is staying on top and creating almost like a glow as if I had ink blended this beautiful starry foiled paper and I just love this look so much. Then I thought, well, could I do the same thing with a darker colored ink? So we took out chip sapphire ink and we put that on the outside edge to kind of create this faux ink blended look. So we're starting with our beautiful pattern paper, but by adding a little bit of ink over top, it's giving it this really, really cool look. So we have the glow in the center of our piece that's eventually gonna become our snow globe, and then kind of like a darker night sky look on the outside of the piece that's going to be our card base. And then here I just have a dry cloth and I'm just rubbing it over top of those beautiful foiled stars to make sure that that ink isn't kind of dulling out the foil of the paper. And so when you do that, you'll just kind of buff off the ink over top of the stars and you'll have the beautiful shininess, but also the faux totally ink blended look, but super, super easy way to do it. And I can't wait to try this on the other colors as well. Now here we're taking out the Magic Iris Snow Globe add-on, but we're going to use it as a snow globe and not a part of a Magic Iris. So we've die cut the snow globe out of some wood grain cardstock and then also these little decorative pieces out of some silver metallic cardstock. And to use this snow globe not as a part of the Magic Iris, what we're going to do is we're just going to trim off the top part of this snow globe. So we're just going to trim that right off. And there's kind of like an embossed line that you can follow with your scissors. It makes it really, really easy to do. Then we're going to die cut one out of white and you'll see how we're going to be layering all of these pieces over each other to create this really great snow globe. And so I love this idea of being able to take a die and use it for something else, not just a magic iris. So now we're going to add some tape runner to the back of our metallic pieces and we're going to layer that onto the snow globe base. Then we're gonna take that same plain circle die that we die cut our starry piece and we're gonna die cut that from some white cardstock. And then I'm gonna take a look at my border dies and we're gonna pick a stitch till side border die and to create a little snow bank that we're going to be using on our snow globe scene here. So we're gonna layer that there. I'm gonna end up using the little snow mouse in the center. So I'm kind of using that as a guide as to how high this hill should go. Then I can hold that in place and run it through the die cut machine. And now I'll have one little snowy hill. 
I wanted to have two hills so we could kind of layer them. So I'm just going to actually use the other side of that circle. I'm going to use that first hill as a guide and then just create a little bit of a taller hill to go in the background. And then we can run that through the die cut machine. And now those are going to layer perfectly and then also be the same exact size as our starry piece because we use the same circle die for both. Then we can start to layer all of the pieces of our snow globe. So we're gonna layer these two cute little hills on, and then we're going to layer this circle right over top. And what I love about this Magic Iris die is that by layering over this plain circle that's three and a half inches, you'll get to see that little stitch detail, but we'll cover up the part that's meant to go on the Magic Iris. So it's a really cool way to get another use out of your dies. Then we can layer the base piece on top and you can just see how cute the snow globe is looking already. Then we're going to take out our snowball fight stamp set and also this beautiful winter village set because it's got some cute little trees we're going to be using as well. We went ahead and stamped and colored these and this is something that Megan did in her card. She used a little black pen and she created some stripes on the scarves on the cute little mice and on the snow mouse and then colored them in kind of a little rainbow order and that's a really cute way to get a different look out of the scarves in this set. It's just so fun and sweet. And so now we're going to start forming our little scene here. We've got our guy that's building the snowballs this guy's throwing a snowball and it's like it's fun just to talk about oh, what's the scene going to be what's going to look like now we're going to add some trees in the background and there's something about that pop of green that to me makes this whole card just look incredible i just love those in the background and then I wanted to add a bow to the top out of some of this nitpicky paper, which is so pretty. And we're gonna take the bow from the Barrel of Apples die set. So it's really fun to take a look at a stamp and go, oh, I just love this bow and it's really cute for Christmas too. So we're gonna layer that right on top, die cut from the nitpicky paper that's gonna make it look kind of like fabric. So we're gonna layer the three pieces. There's a the little kind of tail end of the bow, the main part of the bow, and then the center piece of the bow. And I love the pop of red. It goes along really well with the green to give it a fun Christmassy feel. Now we're going to kind of have the main card base echo the scene that's going on in the snow globe. So we've die cut some white cardstock there with the same stitch rectangle as we did the stars and then used another hillside border die to create a little snow bank for the bottom of the card. And so we can layer that into the bottom and then our snow globe is going to be sitting on top. And you'll see that we've used that same starry paper on both of them so that it kind of looks like you're looking through this translucent snow globe and then you have that little glow in the back that we did with the ink blending that I think just looks so pretty. Then now we're going to take some more of our little trees and characters and then fill in the scene at the bottom. So we'll add our pile of snowballs, the cute little crouching guy that's making the snowballs. He might be my favorite. Or is it this guy who's kind of crouching down from being hit from the snowballs? I don't know. They're all just so sweet and so cute. And then we'll add one more snowball. And when I was making this card, I realized I didn't really leave any room for a sentiment, but that's okay because we can put this sentiment on the inside of the card. And so that's what we're gonna do here. And I love this Merry Messages stamp set for that because it has these really great phrases that I think are so cute on the inside of the card. So I picked out some Blue Jay ink because I thought it was a really nice match to the blue on the outside of the card. And we're gonna stamp Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, which I thought was cute with the little mice. I just think it's a cute little matching sentiment. So if you ever make a card and your scene's just getting crazy on the front, it's okay. You could always put your sentiment on the inside. So here we have a standard size card base at five and a half by four and a quarter. Quarter. We're going to layer the whole card front on top and now this card is all done and oh my goodness it's so cute. I love those shiny stars in the background and creating this fun snow globe scene for these adorable snowball fight is just too sweet. And next up Shari has an incredible card to share with you guys so take it away Shari. So for my snowball fight card, I have colored and cut out my images, all those cute little mice. And then for the snowy or the icy pieces, like this kind of ice fort here, I stamped those with the Lanfran River Rock ink, so they're a little bit lighter in that gray, and all the mice are stamped in black. I'm using the Peekaboo Backdrop Die to cut out this frame. It is cut from some ballet slipper cardstock, and then I cut two, one of each size of those openings from some pixie dust glitter cardstock. This is going to be my snow. For my background or my sky for my little scenes, I'm using this teal sweater paper from the Knit Picky Winter Paper Pack. And I've just cut this down to five and a half by four and a quarter so that it fits my card front perfectly. So I'm just going to add some adhesive to the back of that piece of pattern paper and go ahead and put that onto my card base. 
then I can add some glue to the back of that pink frame and glue that directly to the pattern paper. And this will give me all my little openings for my little scenes that I'm going to create. Now for the snow, I only cut two because I can cut my snow hill from the bottom of one and then flip the square over and then cut the other snow hill for the top out of the same piece because the rectangular and square openings are the same on the top and the bottom. So I've just popped these in here and then I'm going to add one of my simple stitched hillside border dies to cut the top of that snowy hill. And then I'll take this one, put it up in the other rectangular opening and I'll cut that in just a minute. So I'm going to have a little stitch snowy hill for every one of these little frames. So I can do the same thing with that square and for the two at the top I'm going to use a stitched hillside and go across both of them at the same time because for the top I'm going to kind of create a scene that goes across both openings. So I'll just tape that down to both of them and now it looks like it goes continuously from one side to the other. I'll just go ahead and add some liquid glue to the back of these and drop them in. They fit perfectly inside that frame so everything gets nice and lined up. And now I have these glittery snowy hills that I can start to put my scenes on. For the sentiment, I've got a piece of purple cardstock from the textured cardstock purple pack and I'm going to be white heat embossing that happy winter sentiment that comes in the stamp set. I like this one because it's nice and big and it has those open letters which I think is really fun. So I've already prepped my cardstock with an anti-static powder tool. I'm using some clear embossing ink and then I'll just add my white embossing powder to the stickiness of the ink. Then I can heat this up with my heat tool and melt that embossing powder so I get that nice bright white sentiment on that purple cardstock. Now I'm going to take my banner die and cut this out. I'm going to make a shorter banner than what this one cuts so you can see that I kind of have it to where my sentiment is to the left side of the banner. So I'll go ahead and cut this out once. And then I'll line this banner back up so I can trim off that other end and get the fishtail but have a shorter length of the banner. And here is that shorter banner that fits that happy winter sentiment perfectly. That is going to go in the center of my card lined up with that frame through that goes horizontally through the middle. So I'm popping that up with some foam squares just added it all the way across and then I'll line it up with that horizontal piece. Now I can start to add my little scenes. So before I glue anything down I am going to lay all these out. I kind of planned it out ahead of time but now that I have my actual die cuts I'm just going to lay them out where I want them to be and then I'll come back and start to adhere them down. So I'll be using some foam squares for most of these pieces. I have that cute little, I guess, snow mouse instead of snowman. Of course, I'm popping up all these mice with some foam squares. Now for some of these snowballs, this pile of snowballs, I'm just gonna glue that directly to the background as well as this one that's kind of gone splat in front. And then for the one that's flying through the air from someone that threw it you know, off the side of the card. I'm using some foam squares, but I did cut them in half so that it fits behind that perfectly. I'll move on to the top and I'm going to do the same thing here, cutting the foam squares for that snowball that that mouse is throwing. Of course, I popped him up on some foam squares as well. I've got this little one here that's dodging some snowballs. I'm going to add my little flag to the top of my fort made out of ice blocks here so that it's all one piece. And I'm just going to glue this directly flat on the back. And this is the piece that's overlapping that frame to make this one on top kind of a full length scene. And then I'll just add this last mouse who's kind of running up the fort ready to throw another snowball. 
And then to make the snowballs and the ice match the glittery snow of the ground, I'm just adding some stickless glitter just to all those snowy, icy parts of my scene. A little bit to my snow mouse snowman here. And then this is my finished card. I really love those pastel colors for winter. I kept it really consistent with my colors for my little mice and their toboggans and scarves. And I really love that pattern paper in the background. This card is so sweet, Shari, and I just love that Nipiki paper as the sky it looks gorgeous. And next up, we have some incredible cards by the design team. And this card by Yanea is so sweet. I just love that beautiful banner in the center. Grace just blew me away by creating this card. She used the giant outlined Oh What Fun and then added the cute little mice all around that. And as you open up the card, she created this really cute shadow box on the inside that has more adorable snowball fight scenes that I just love. Callie used fairy dust stencil paste over her snow flurries background stencil on that beautiful purple sky and I just love it. This card by Audrey is so fun. I love that bright turquoise in the background and her polka dotted scarves. Here Elise created such a sweet card and I love the pink sky. It's just gorgeous. I just adore this card by Maureen. I love that she included our cute little figure skating mice along with the snowball fight. They are a great match together. And then here Mindy used our awesome snow flurries background stencil in the background of her ugly and bright adorable card. Here we have a really fun card by Kara where she used the giant outline of what fun to be a cute little place for her snowball fight scene to be occurring. Elena has the awesome stitch snowflake background as a great background for her adorable snowball fight scene. And then here is the card by Megan that inspired us to make ours so gorgeous and so much fun. This card by Lynette is so sweet and I love how she used the awesome stitch till side backdrop as a great place to create her scene. This is the card by Tammy that inspired us to make ours. It's so cute and fun. I just love that die cut snowflake as the O. And this card by Leticia is just adorable. I love her bright colors for winter. It's so happy. So we cannot wait to see how you guys use these new products. So make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching today and we hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.